Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this video, we will learn about the demultiplexer, and the following topics will be covered in this video. So in the earlier video of the multiplexer, we have seen that the multiplexer is many to one device. That means it has several inputs and one output, and depending on the inputs at the selection line, only one of the input is connected at the output. So this demultiplexer. is exactly opposite to that that means it is the one to many device so it has one input and several outputs and to select the specific output it has several selection lines and depending on the input at the selection line the input is connected to the specific output line now since the input to the selection line is in binary form so to select the m different outputs the required number of selection lines are log m to the base 2 or in other words with the n selection lines we can distinguish total 2 to the power n different outputs that means here this m is equal to 2 to the power n or in other words this n is equal to log m to the base 2 so symbolically this demultiplexer is also represented by the following symbol and in the abbreviated form it is also often called as dmux so if the demultiplexer has one input and m output then typically it is referred as one cross m dmux where this one represents the input and this m represents the output so depending on the number of outputs and the selection line we can have the different types of demultiplexers like one cross 2 dmux and one cross 4 dmux so in case of the one cross 2 dmux there is one input and two output and to select any one of the two outputs we have one selection line on the other hand in case of the one cross four demultiplexer there is one input and four outputs and to select any one of the four outputs there are total two selection lines likewise in case of the one cross eight demultiplexer to select any one of the eight outputs there are total three selection lines so in this way depending on the number of outputs and the selection line we have the different types of demultiplexers so now let us see few applications of the demultiplexer so typically in the time division multiplexing applications the multiplexers and the demultiplexers are used together so as we have seen earlier when the channel resources or the channel bandwidth is limited then with the help of the multiplexer the data of the different users can be time division multiplexed so the multiplexer is used at the transmitter side and by connecting the counter output to the selection line the different outputs can be connected to the output at the specific intervals and in this way the data of the different users can be multiplexed similarly on the receiver side using the demultiplexer the multiplex data can be demultiplexed and it can be sent to the specific user so once again by connecting the counter to the selection lines the input line can be connected to the specific output and in this way the data can be sent to the specific user so in this way this demultiplexer and the multiplexers are used together in this time division multiplexing apart from that it can also be used for the serial to parallel conversion and moreover it can also be used in all the applications where the decoder is used because the logic circuit of the demultiplexer is very similar to the decoder and with the little change in the decoder circuit it can also be used as the demultiplexer and in fact that is why if you see some of the decoder ICs then it is always mentioned as decoder slash demultiplexer ICs that means the decoder can also be used as the demultiplexer that means the demultiplexer can also be used for implementing different boolean functions so at the later part of the video we will see that how we can use this demultiplexer for implementing different logic functions but first let us see how to use the decoder as the demultiplexer so to use this decoder as the demultiplexer we need to connect the input of the demultiplexer at this enable input and we need to apply the selection lines of this demultiplexer to the input of this decoder so let us take the case of this 3 to 8 decoder and this is the logic circuit of this 3 to 8 decoder with the enable input so in this 3 to 8 decoder 
when this enable input is high then depending on the input combination of this a b and c only one of the output will be high so here what we can do we can apply the selection inputs of the demultiplexer to the inputs of the decoder and we can apply the input of the decoder to this enable input so now based on the selection inputs the input i will appear only at the one of the outputs and in this way the same decoder circuit will now work as the demultiplexer so this is the logic circuit of the one cross eight demultiplexer so as you can see depending on the selection inputs this input i will appear only at the one of the outputs and this is the truth table of the one cross eight demultiplexer similarly this is the truth table of the one cross four demultiplexer and as you can see depending on the input combination of the selection line the input will appear only at the one of the outputs and at that time the remaining outputs are zero so this is the logic circuit of this one cross four demultiplexer so as you can see this one cross four demultiplexer requires the four and gates and the each and gate consists of three inputs similarly this one cross eight demultiplexer requires the eight and gates and the each and gate consists of four inputs so as you can see as we go for the larger multiplexer then we require the and gates with more inputs that means for the large demultiplexer the design complexity and the cost will also increase and that is why typically these large demultiplexers are implemented using the smaller demultiplexers for example this 1 cross 16 demultiplexer can be implemented with the help of the 1 cross 8 demultiplexers so let us see that and since we are implementing it with the help of the 1 cross 8 demultiplexer so we require two such demultiplexers at the output side and with the help of this two demultiplexers we will get total 16 outputs now if we talk about the selection lines then the each demultiplexer consists of three selection lines so here starting from the lsb the first three selection lines that is s0 s1 and s2 are connected to the both demultiplexers now on the input side to select any one of the two demultiplexers we require one more demux and for that we can use the one cross two demultiplexers so as you can see the output of this one cross two demultiplexers are given to this one cross eight demultiplexers and the last selection line that is s3 is connected to this one cross two demux so when this s3 is equal to 0 then the input will appear at this upper demux and depending on the input combination of this s2 s1 and s0 this input i will appear at one of the eight outputs that is between d0 and d7 likewise when this s3 is equal to 1 then this input will appear at the lower demux and depending on the values of this s2 s1 and s0 this input will appear at any one of the eight outputs between d8 to d15 so in this way we can design this 1 cross 16 demultiplexer using the two 1 cross 8 demultiplexers and one 1 cross 2 demultiplexer similarly we can also design this 1 cross 16 demultiplexer using only 1 cross 4 demultiplexers so let us see that so as we have seen in case of the 1 cross 16 demultiplexer we have total 16 outputs and when we are designing it using this 1 cross 4 demultiplexer then we require four such demultiplexers so using this four demultiplexers we will get total 16 outputs now this 1 cross 16 demultiplexer has four selection lines so starting from the lsb connect first two selection lines to all four demux that means this s0 and s1 are connected to all four demux now on the input side to select any one of the four demux we require one more demultiplexer and in this case we can use this one cross four demultiplexer so here the four output of this one cross four demultiplexer are given to the four demultiplexers and here the selection line s3 and s2 are connected to this one cross four demux so now depending on the value of this s3 and s2 this input will appear at one of the four demultiplexers for example 
span this S3 and S2 are 10, then this input will appear at this 30 mux. And depending on the value of this S1 and S0, the input will appear at the one of the four outputs that is between D8 and D11. So if the value of this S1 and S0 are 11, then the input will appear at the output D11. So in this way, using these 5 1 cross 4 demultiplexers, we can design this 1 cross 16 demultiplexer. And in general, in this way, we can design the larger demultiplexers with the help of the smaller demultiplexers. Alright, so as you have seen, since the design of the demultiplexer is very similar to the decoder, so it can also be used for implementing different boolean functions. So similar to the decoder, if we want to implement the boolean functions with the n variables, then we require the demultiplexer with the n selection lines. For example, if we want to implement the three variable boolean function, then we require the one cross eight demultiplexer because it has the three selection lines. All right. So now let us see how to implement the full adder using this demultiplexer. So this full adder has the three inputs and the two outputs. That is the sum and the carry output. And this is the truth table of this full adder. So earlier we have already implemented this full adder using this decoder. And we have seen that the each input combination of this A, B and C represents the specific mean term. Or in other words, the each decoder output represents the specific mean term. So if we combine all the mean terms for which the output of the boolean function is high, then we will get the particular boolean function. So in this case, the sum output is high for the four different mean terms. That is mean term m1, m2, m4 and m7. So here, if we combine the d1, d2, d4 and d7 outputs of the decoder using the OR gate, then we will get the sum output. Similarly, by combining this D3, D5, D6 and D7 outputs of the decoder using this another OR gate, we will get this carry output. And in this way, we can implement the full adder with the help of the decoder. So in the earlier video of the decoder, we have already seen that. So in case of the demultiplexer, these three inputs A, B and C in are connected to the three selection lines. And this input I of the demultiplexer is connected to the logic one. So now, based on the input combination of this A, B and C in, only one of the output of the demultiplexer will become high. So for the sum output, these D1, D2, D4 and D7 outputs of the demultiplexer are combined using the OR gate. While for the carry output, these D3, D5, D6 and D7 are combined using the another OR gate. So in this way, we can implement this full adder using this demultiplexer. So let us take one more example and let us see how we can design this 3-bit event parity generator with the help of the demultiplexer. So here is the truth table of this 3-bit parity generator. So as you can see from the truth table for this event parity generator, this output P is high when the number of bits in the input are odd. So in this case, for the four different input combinations, this parity bit P is high. That is for the mean term M1, M2, M4 and M7. Now here, since we have the three variables, so we require the demultiplexer with the three selection lines. Or in other words, we require the one cross eight demultiplexer. So here, first of all, let us connect the variables A, B and C to the selection lines. And let us connect the input of the demultiplexer to the logic one. Now here, since the output of the parity generator is high for the four different mean terms. So let us combine these outputs D1, D3, D4 and D7. And we can combine them with the help of the OR gate. So now this circuit is equivalent to the even parity generator. So in this way, we can design the logic circuits with the help of the demultiplexer. So I hope in this video, you got the general overview of the demultiplexer. So if you have any questions or suggestions, then do let me know here in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos.